College basketball is a sport that's held up by three things, tradition, the NCAA tournament, and the Blue Bloods. But the Blue Bloods struggled throughout a turbulent 2020-2021 season. And it's the first time since 1996, I believe it is, that we'll have a championship game without Duke, without Carolina. Uh, feels like the new bloods, to use the Florida State phrase. On February 8, 2021, UCLA, North Carolina, Kansas, Duke, and Kentucky, college basketball's blue bloods, were not ranked in that week's Associated Press Top 25 poll. Those five schools had not collectively been unranked since 1961. With the Champions Classic at Madison Square Garden set to kick off the college basketball season tonight, it's fair to wonder if last season's struggles for the Blue Bloods were a blip or a trend. And with Roy Williams' retirement at North Carolina and Coach K's final season ahead at Duke, what's next for the sport that has been defined by those brands? The reason we're doing this is because Mickey and I have decided the journey's going to be over in a year, and we're going to go after it as hard as we possibly can. The challenge that the Blue Bloods face is that top players have never had more options. From overtime elite to the G League to overseas, some of the best young players have decided to pursue the NBA without college. And those who pick college know they can win big and reach their professional dreams without going to Duke or Kentucky. Proof? The last two number one picks in the NBA draft, former Oklahoma State star Kate Cunningham. Here's Cunningham, the pull up. Got it! And former Georgia star Anthony Edwards. Circus move! What a shot by Anthony Edwards! Both had offers from Blue Blood programs that they turned down. Overall, UCLA, North Carolina, Kansas, Duke, and Kentucky produced just three first-round picks in the 2021 NBA Draft. None of them were lottery picks. Those schools had nine first-round picks just six years earlier in the 2015 NBA Draft. Yet the talent those schools have returned this season proves they're equipped to bounce back. UCLA's Johnny Juzang is a preseason All-American. Kentucky's Ty Ty Washington and Duke's Paulo Banchero are both projected first-round picks in next summer's NBA draft. Both North Carolina and Kansas took advantage of the transfer portal to boost their rosters as well. All five teams are ranked in the Associated Press preseason poll this year. But their staying power is unknown. Coach K's departure could lead to a new, more challenging chapter for Duke. The talent pool is vast and spread across the country and the transfer portal will make it more difficult for all teams to build momentum. As the 2021-2022 season begins, the Blue Bloods still matter. But, as last year proved, they face more competition than ever. J.J. Redick played 15 seasons in the NBA and is still the all-time leading scorer for his alma mater, Duke University, where he played for 2002 to 2006. He's now an ESPN analyst. So we want to ask you, JJ, when you saw Duke, Kansas, UCLA, UNC, and Kentucky all missing the top 25 at the same time at one point last year, what went through your mind? Changing times. First of all, last year was a little bit of an anomaly given all of the COVID protocols. Uh, I was just at Duke this past weekend. I found out they lived in a hotel all of last season. So it's a very different college basketball season. But look, I think the one and done uh, rule, which came to effect uh, during my senior year of, of college, uh, has had a profound impact on college basketball. And I think age matters. And you're seeing a number of high profile, uh, highly regarded high school players go to college. They stay one year. They feel some sense of obligation to leave for the draft after that. And so as you get further down the line now, 15 years into this rule, uh, it's, it's a lot of older teams that are having success, guys at mid-majors and uh, other, other uh, FBS, you know, Big Six Conference uh, that, that have stuck around for three or four years that are having a huge impact on the game. Uh, when you're asking 18 or 19-year-old kids as freshmen to have a huge impact, it's, it's different. It's a different game than high school. There's other programs. I mean, there's the one and done rule, of course, but then there's the new rules with the transfer portal. There's options like the G League, the Overtime Elite. What in your mind is the biggest challenge facing Blue Bloods who want to stay dominant year after year? 
I think the biggest challenge is not embracing change. Uh, we live in a different world right now, <laughs> and I'm very happy that athletes now get to participate in the marketplace that they're help building, whether that is overtime elite where they can earn some money or going straight to the G League Ignite and earning a real salary uh, or using their name, image, and likeness. We've argued for years as, as players and athletes, if coaches can switch schools and not sit out a year, why should athletes have to do that? Uh, it's not like we're asking students who transfer to sit out a year of academics. Uh, so I, I think all of this uh, is, is going to ch completely change the, the landscape of college basketball. And the schools that are ahead of this and are embracing this and are thinking five, ten years out, those are the ones ten years from now that will be the current Blue Buds. You, of course, played for Duke. You played for Coach K, who has announced that he's going to retire at the end of this season. Can Duke remain the dominant powerhouse that it's been all these years without its legendary coach? Absolutely. Absolutely. One of the reasons is Coach has built an incredible brand. Uh, Duke University is a global thing right now. Uh, and, and with the amount of success that he's had over 40 plus years, I think the, the program will continue to be a blue blood in college basketball. Second reason, I'm very bullish on John Shire. I think John Shire is going to be very successful at Duke. You need, you need great players to be a blue blood. You need great players to be great at college basketball. And John has shown that he can recruit great players. Are we living in the middle of a major generational shift in college basketball, or is this just a blip on the radar right now? No, I think it is a generational shift. And I, I, I think it started 15 years ago, and now we're seeing uh, with name image likeness, with the transfer portal, that players are having more freedom. So there's no prediction that I can make about what college basketball will look like in five years or 10 years. I just know that it's changing and it's changing right before our eyes. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN Plus.